Hi guys, welcome. It's Peter here and I'm going to start with the physical science mid-year exam memo um, and let's start with question one. So here I've got it. Okay, uh, question one, multiple choice and oh man, you guys, I don't know why, but, but multiple choice seems to be such a challenge for you. Okay, let's start. An astronaut is in orbit around the Earth. The spacecraft in which he travels has a mass of M, while the Earth has a mass of um, capital M, and he's a distance R away from the center of the Earth. If the distance between the spacecraft and the Earth, Earth's center is doubled, the force that the Earth exerts on the spacecraft will be, okay, so the distance between the Earth and the spacecraft is doubled, so it used to be R, now it is 2R. Now, for that you need to know the formula, and if we look at the formula, we see that the formula, think it's something like this, force is equal to capital G M M over R squared. Okay, and the point is they very often this. This thing about doubling, just go and look in your formula. It's so often when you try and, when they ask you a question like that and they're talking about doubling the distance between, it's because there is, it's not just going to be half the force. Now, what you should know is that when two objects are um, close to each other, there exists a force that is directly proportional to their mass and indirectly proportional to the square of their distance, which means if the distance doubles, okay, then it doesn't mean the force will halve, it will square, it will half of half, a quarter. In other words, if we have G M capital M over, so they say the distance doubled, so this becomes 2R squared, okay, the whole distance doubled, and so this is G M over 4 R squared, and you can see based on, from between the original one, which had a 1 over 1, it is now 1 over 4, so it's a fourth, it's a quarter of the original, okay, so which one is that, okay, it's a quarter of the original force. Question 2, if an object's on an incline and makes an angle theta with the horizontal, it has a weight W and a gravitational constant is that, then the normal force is given by which expression? Okay, so let's just go draw it. Okay. Guys, these things don't mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I honestly don't know which is the formula there. I literally go and draw this thing and figure it out. Okay, so there's two marks. I have enough time to do it for two marks. So there's my, uh, there's my surface. Here's my theta. There's my theta. They're asking me for an object. Let's just make a round object. easy to draw. Round object. I've got a, a, a downwards force here. That's my weight. Got my weight. And they're asking me my normal force. Now, if you don't know the sketch, obviously you can't do this question. Okay. They're asking me the size of my normal force. And now what you need to know is that these values together, the forces that work in on here, there's now an upward force and a downward for force. That's it. So if I now complete my, um, my vectors, okay, this is my normal force and this is my weight and then this is the resultant. Let's do it in a different color. This is the resultant force. This is the net force that I will get. My object will start rolling down because the up, upwards and downwards force. Um, okay, so um, friction might be involved in there, but that will just shorten the net force. It's not so important. But we just need to go and figure out in this triangle, where does theta go? Well, theta in this triangle, you'll notice that in in the triangle that I drew here, theta is actually here. If I have my horizontal, theta is actually there. This is a 90 degree because your 
your normal force is perpendicular to the um, to the surface and the net force is parallel to the surface so this is a 90 degree but this is also 90 degrees I don't want to put it on this side but yeah that's also 90 degrees so if this is theta then this angle is 90 degrees minus theta and so if this is 90 degrees minus theta then that is theta again so in this triangle if this is theta this is my weight W and this is the normal force that I'm trying to find now if you look at this triangle and hopefully there's many of you that's done the, the trig necessary and so you see there's an opposite and an adjacent based on the angle the observed angle here okay and so the adjacent is is the one I'm trying to find so it, this is cos cos is cos of theta is adjacent that's the normal force I'm trying to find divided by the hypotenuse which is the weight see that's the longest side is the hypotenuse so that if I just multiply both sides with W I get that the normal force is equal to W cos of theta excellent let's go on to the next question okay um, actually before I uh, let me just correct myself notice that the gravitational constant was given and it was given as positive which means downwards is um, is positive and since the normal force in this case would be upwards it should be that one okay because it would be negative the weight excellent let's go on okay a ball is thrown upwards to, at this veloc velocity it reaches its maximum height at 15 meters above the surface of the earth at its maximum height the speed of the ball in meters per second is zero if I've reached my maximum height I'm not moving anymore at the moment of my maximum height my velocity is simply zero easy question okay a steel ball M rolls right along the smooth horizontal surface with a constant velocity V it collides with a stationary ball that has double um, that is a mass of 2 M okay so the first one has a mass m the next one has a mass 2m if the steel ball has a velocity of a half v after the collision the first steel ball will have a velocity of okay sorry if the second steel ball after the collision has half the original velocity what is the um uh, what of uh, what was the first steel ball or what will the first steel ball's velocity be okay so the first steel ball had a velocity of V okay so here obviously we're doing we're working with momentum they tell us that initially the, the, the total momentum in the beginning is just mass times velocity My, I had mass times velocity for the first steel ball plus mass times velocity for the second steel ball but that one was stationary so in other words this only the first steel balls velocity okay afterwards we have um, mass so the total the total velocity in the beginning is just MV in the second in the second part we've got um, the in the first one's mass and we want to know what is its velocity plus the second one has double that one's mass 2m and now it's moving at half the velocity a half v and so when I calculate when I and, and, uh, when I do all of this I must get an answer of mv and now here you can see but 2m times a half mv is already mv so on this side that mass must multiply a zero velocity otherwise I will have more than just MV okay and that is why this question will have a velocity of zero V 
The man uh, pushes a wheel, burrow up an incline. The work done by the man to overcome the force of gravity is an example of... I thought this was a silly question. I didn't set this question. It's a, an example of positive work done on an object. Yes. Okay. I am exerting a force in this... Um, in the same direction as the object is moving. So, the work done by a man to overcome the force of gravity. A man pushes a wheelbarrow up an incline. The man's exerted force is in the same direction as the motion of the force. And um, so, the wheelbarrow is going up. The man is pushing it up. So, it's an example of positive work done. But let's just go and read the rest. The net work done. So, uh, the work done on the man to overcome gravity is an example of net work done on the object. No, no, no. Net work done on the object overcome uh, or increases the, um, the the change in kinetic energy. So the work done by the man to overcome gravity does not necessarily um, cause it to accelerate. Negative work done on the object? No, it's not negative done um, uh, on this object because the work that done by the man to overcome gravity is uh, is in the same direction as the motion of the of the option so for example example of negative work done is like uh, gra gravity in this case itself does negative work on the object because gravity is down and the object is moving up um, friction would be an example of negative work done because friction is always in the opposite direction as motion anyway um, but the next another question that could have been right it is an example of work done by the applied force on an object yes the man is applying a force so both of these um, I took both of those answers as correct okay Next question, two men, um, a hiker, a climber of equal mass, height and build, are in a race to attempt to reach the summit of a hill. The hiker reaches the summit before the climber. Which statement is correct? The hiker does more work. Um, remember that that work done is simply, let me go to my work done is simply work is force times delta x so um and then the, the the angle between the forces i want you to notice that the work done doesn't matter which part path you take whether i take whether i'm the climber or the hiker so here the climber goes just directly okay delta x that's the displacement that's a displacement. So it doesn't matter which path you take. The work done by the two men are the same. Okay. So work done is the same, but power is work over time. Okay. So the person who does it in less power, so power is inversely proportionate to time. The one that did it in less time did it um, exerted more power, but even though the force applied, the force applied here was simply overcoming uh, gravity. That's all they did. There was no um, uh, acceleration involved. It was simply overcoming gravity. So, uh, which one reached their first um, or a race? In the, the hiker reaches the summit first. Did the hiker do more work? No. Did the climber have more power? No. The one that did it in the less time did the most power. Did both have the same amount of power? No. Did both do the same amount of work? Yes. Okay. Uh, two cars are traveling at the same speeds are approaching a hotel from opposite directions. Again, I thought this was a silly question. As shown in the figure below, they equal distance distances from a hotel they simultaneously sound their horn so they're reaching they're the same distance from this hotel they're reaching um, uh, both have the same frequency f to alert the hotel of the approach there is a strong wind blowing from the left as shown relative to the ground the cars are traveling slightly faster than the speed of the wind which of the following best describes the pitch observed by the car's horns at the hotel? Okay, so both of the cars are traveling at a um, constant velocity. They sound their horns. So the Doppler principle would tell us that the, um, the, 
sound waves are compressed because they are both moving towards the um, the hotel so as they moving towards the hotel the sounds in front of the cars will have a higher pitch problem is there's a wind now what the wind will do is it will counter the effect of the um, um, it, it will it would simply increase the velocity of sound if the sound is traveling in the same direction as the wind and decrease the velocity of sound if it is traveling in the opposite direction and obviously simply because uh, wind is the motion of particles and so is sound the motion of particles so the wind will help along the sound that's in the same direction and counter the sound in the opposite direction but here it's important to notice that relative to the ground um, the cars are traveling slightly faster than the speed of the wind okay so in the end the speed of the car um, compared to the speed of the wind there is still a velocity in the forward direction for car B big um, for the sound because he's still traveling slightly faster so there is some um, sort of effect by car B on the sound waves okay so he is still relative to the wind adding velocity in the forward direction car A's he's got um, his his velocity is is fairly large since the the wind now kind of doubles the velocity of the um, sound waves produced by the car. Okay, uh, the sound from car A will have a higher pitch. Yes, definitely because the um, the frequency is very squeezed by the velocity as well as the um, the frequency itself. The sound um, so. He will have a higher pitch and A will have a higher pitch it's either between A and B sound car B will also have a higher pitch yes because still relative to the wind he is still adding velocity to his sound waves so yes um, sound A will have a higher pitch sound B will have a lower pitch no sound B car B will not have a lower pitch it will still have a higher pitch there we go that is the question answer then a, a multiple choice for now we'll see you in the next video i'm very excited to get to the actual calculations we'll see you there